up everybody this is tech g back with another video and in this video i'm going to be explaining to you exactly how you can go about starting a career in networking so let's get into it networking this sounds intimidating at first especially for many beginners because it conjures up images of tangled cables blinking lights and overly complex ip address jargon but the truth is once you get past the initial techie vibe Networking is one of the most practical and rewarding areas of IT that you can learn. So whether you're aiming for a career in IT, cybersecurity, or you just want to understand how your home Wi-Fi works, well, this video is going to be for you. So I'm going to break it all down step by step. So by the end, you'll know exactly where to start, what to focus on, and how to build your skills in computer networking without getting overwhelmed. All right. So before we get into the weeds, let's go ahead and answer the why meaning why should you learn networking in the first place? Well, here's the deal. Everything you do online, like scrolling through Instagram, sending emails, playing online games, video calling, all of that stuff runs on the network. Networks connect your phone to the internet, your smart fridge to the cloud, and your office computers to one another. And here's a few solid reasons to dive into networking. So one thing, networking is in high demand. Every business needs networking professionals. It's also a gateway to other IT careers. It's foundational for cybersecurity, cloud computing, and system administration. To learn practical knowledge because you're going to finally understand why your Wi-Fi sucks in the kitchen and what you can do to fix it. And it can give you problem solving power. So when something breaks, you'll know what to do and not waste your time in random forms on Google stuck in panic mode. All right. So now that we got that out of the way, the first thing you need to do is understand what networking actually is. So at its core, networking is about connecting devices so they can not communicate. So imagine two people talking on walkie talkies. Now replace the people with computers and the walkie talkies with network cables or wireless signals. That's the basic idea. So in networking, we connect devices like computers, smartphones, and printers. We also connect to services like websites, file servers, and email systems. And then we have infrastructure devices that connect all this stuff together for us like routers, switches, modems, and firewalls. And these connections let us share data, resources, and communicate securely and efficiently. The next thing you need to do is learn the language or the key terminology. So networking has its own lingo. And to speak the language, you got to start with these must know terms. So you need to know what an IP address is. And basically, that's a unique number assigned to every device on the network. You need to know what a router is that connects your local network to the Internet. You need to know what a switch is that connects multiple devices within a local network. They got firewalls. They block unauthorized access to or from a network. They got local area networks, and these are small networks like your home or office. They got wide area networks, and these are large networks that can span cities, countries, or the globe like the Internet. You got this thing called DNS or the domain name system, and this translates domain names into IP addresses. And you got this thing called the DHCP or the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, and this automatically assigns IP addresses to devices. So understanding these terms, this is going to help you make sense of documentation, study guides, and YouTube tutorial videos that you're going to be watching as you move forward. The next thing you need to know are the different types of networks. So here's a quick overview of the most common network types. You got what is called a personal area network. So think of your Bluetooth headphones and your phone talking to you. And then you got your local area network. So once again, this is your Wi-Fi network at your house. You got your wireless local area network. And this is like your local area network, except it's wireless. You got what is called a wide area network. So think of the Internet. You got virtual private networks or VPNs, and these things create secure tunnels across public networks. And then you have what is called a storage area network or a SAN, and these are used for data storage access and enterprise setups. Now, you don't need to memorize all of them right now. You just need to be familiar with the overall landscape. All right, so moving on, and the next thing you want to get familiar with is called the OSI model. Now, the OSI model, this is one of these concepts that trips up beginners, but it doesn't have to be complicated. The OSI model, this is a framework used to understand how data travels from one computer to another across the network. And it breaks down into seven layers. So you got the first layer, which is the physical layer. And these are your cables, your wires, and any physical hardware. You got your data link. This deals with MAC addresses and the Ethernet. 
You got your network layer. We're talking about IP addresses and routers. You got your transport layer. And that's when we start talking about protocols like TCP and UDP and port numbers. You got your session layer. This is for managing communication sessions. And you got your presentation layer. And this is for data format. And we're dealing with things like encryption and compression. And then you have your application layer. And this is the interface that you interact with, like your web browser or your email application. Now, for beginners, we just want to focus on the first four layers. They're the most relevant when you're troubleshooting or configuring networks. All right. And the next thing you want to do, you want to go out there and get some hands on experience, even if you don't have access to fancy equipment. So theory is great, but you're going to learn faster by doing. And no, you don't need to go out there and buy a rack full of servers to practice networking. So here are some lab ideas you can possibly work on. You can set up a home Wi-Fi network where you can go out there and change the SSID, the password, and set up some encryption. You can create a network map of all your home devices. You can use IP config or IF config to find your IP address for your devices in your house. You can try the ping, trace route, or NS lookup commands from your terminal. And you can install Wireshark and observe network traffic. And you can do this by starting with your own system. Here are some additional free tools that you can use to get your practice on. You can download Cisco's Packet Tracer, which is a simulation to help you go about configuring routers and switches. You got GNS3. This is a more advanced version of network simulation, very similar to Packet Tracer. You got Wireshark, which we just talked about. And this is for packet sniffing and analysis. And you got VirtualBox plus Linux VMs where you can simulate networks. And you can even learn by troubleshooting real problems that you experience in real life. So if you're dealing with some slow Wi-Fi issues or your printer's not connecting, go out there and fix all that stuff and document it so you can put it on a future resume so it can be classified as experience. All right. And the next thing you want to do, you want to start studying the fundamentals. So if you're serious about building a strong networking foundation, it's going to help you to go through a structured content. And here's what you should focus on. So you want to start focusing on your core networking topics. So you want to know what IP addresses are, specifically the differences between IP version four and IP version six. You want to know how DNS works. You want to know what subnetting is and why it's actually useful. You want to know the difference between static and dynamic IP addresses. You want to know what port numbers and common protocols are like HTTP, FTP, SSH, and DNS. You want to know what a firewall does and how to set one up. You want to know the differences between public and private networks. And you want to know the basics of wireless networking, like dealing with SSIDs, encryption, and frequency bands. And then you also want to go out there and get certified. So we have the CompTIA Tech Plus Cert, and this is good if you are brand new to IT and know absolutely nothing about technology. After that, you got your CompTIA Network Plus, and this is an industry-recognized certification and it's beginner-friendly. And then you have your Cisco CCNA, and this is a more advanced networking certification, and it is highly respected in the industry. Now, understand, you do not need a certification to start. But the materials they use, they do make for great structured learning. All right. So the next thing you want to do, you want to practice with real world scenarios. So once you understand the basics, it's time for you to go out there and simulate real world scenarios. So go out there and set up a small office network using a switch and a router. Configure a printer to work over the network. Create a guest Wi-Fi network with limited access. Practice troubleshooting because somebody is going to ask you to solve their problem for why their PC cannot connect to the internet. And then go out there and learn how to set up a firewall using PFSense, which is an open source firewall router software. So once you go out there and do all of that stuff, basically these exercises, they will help you to think like a network technician or a system administrator. Another thing that you can do, you can join communities and ask questions. So one of the best ways to learn faster is to join the conversation. And some places that you can hang out are IT communities on Discord, Go out there and look for beginner IT and networking groups on LinkedIn or search for tech meetups or IT professional gatherings in your area. Go out there and ask for help, get feedback on your labs or just lurk and learn from others questions. Now, if you've done all of that and you figured, hey, I love networking and there are many career paths that you can explore. So you can start thinking about becoming a network technician and these people, they basically set up and maintain network equipment. You got network administrators. They manage an organization's network day to day activities. They got system administrators. This is a broader IT role with networking duties. You got cybersecurity analysts. They monitor and protect network traffic. 
You got cloud engineers, they work with networking and cloud environments, and you got network engineers where they design and optimize large scale networks. Now, most of these roles require certifications like the CompTIA Network Plus or a CCNA and experience, but the journey starts with the basics that you're going to be learning about. So keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and wrap all this up. So here's the truth that every networking professional knows. Everyone starts somewhere. You don't need to be a math genius or a hardware wizard to learn networking. You just need curiosity, patience, and a willingness to practice. So start by learning what an IP address is, play with your home network, Google everything, break stuff in a safe way, fix it, then ask questions and repeat the process. Because in time, the weird acronyms will start to make sense and you'll catch yourself confidently troubleshooting Wi-Fi issues or configuring your router and realizing that you've come a very long way. So go ahead and dive in because networking is waiting for you.